Thank you all for coming to our admin working group. Um, kind of an open agenda. Uh, Dan had suggested since next week is uh, bug squashing week, it would be good to kind of look at or at least identify some bugs as, as a group that are impacting us so that we can uh, work or test them in addition to the ones that Taryn will be sharing on her great spreadsheet. Um, so, I and I have a question that's related to all of that for Taryn or anybody that's gone to three thirteen now. We have it on test. So there is an a maybe issue with um, I don't know if it's combo boxes, but forms um, that have been written so that if and a good example, and I don't know if because I haven't seen a 313 server. Um, so a good example would be if you went to uh, user search as a modal, not like the interface through, well, maybe it is interface through the, hmm, I don't know if it's also through a uh, search and embedded in the page, but definitely the modal. Um, and then also if you're going to, um, add to buckets in the staff catalog. So it's not just that one modal, where if you have a drop down that you select um, permission group mm -hmm. or an existing bucket, uh, that selection doesn't actually populate the field. It does select it, but it doesn't populate the field. It's populating on mine. On the 313? Um, yeah. I. I'll share my screen because it's not actually performing the search. And just to make sure I understand. Um, okay, I'm going to so, check it, Taryn's test so server like, as well. Theoretically, if I wanted to do like staff, is this what you mean? Yes. Okay. Um, except for that looks like an embedded page. So oh, okay. if you can go to, if you go to catalog, search like any, like whatever, and um, then go to place a hold. Is this your production catalog? No, this is your this test is catalog, test. right? Oh, good. Yeah. This is my test item. So this and is... then, yeah, just go to place a hold once you Here. get into that item. Um, or do you want me to go into the item? Yeah, record? go in, go ahead into the item record. I think it might be easier from there. Okay. Um, and then yeah, and then hold. place a hold and then uh, search for patron. So right there in that profile group, um, if you can select one from there, see that is populating. So I don't see it in 313. I'm going to get into your Taryn's test box here that may... That didn't ask me to register a workstation. It knows me. <laughs> Been known. I just, I just have to restart my headphones. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll also add that I'm also testing on a 3.13 test server that we have locally. And mine's working okay. the same and way. It's as populating. It's, okay. Yeah, I'm getting the population too. Um. Ruth, is this on one of your test servers or a production server? It's on it's on one of our ECDI test servers. It's actually on two of them. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I wonder I, if it's something just like Autogen needs to be run or something. Is there something not connecting with the, the, possible. With the down lists? Um, but I kind of got gaslit during when I reported it. So um, your dog's head is right above your head. <laughs> Yeah, it's floating. <laughs> it's quite comical. <laughs> it's super cute. I'm like, oh. is that dog real? Is that a picture of your dog? It's a picture that's hanging on on the wall behind me. It's I don't so know why cute. it's doing. I guess it's thinking that it's part of my head. Mm -hmm. like I think it has hat. to to. to... <laughs> if it works on the other dogs, there's all dogs behind me. It's awesome. So, and this also <laughs> worked on your test server. <laughs> Okay. I'm not so, sure. I'm not sure what is uh, what do you mean exactly, but but the, uh, but the localized server, which is available also uh, in English, is uh, on uh, is uh, uh, three point thirteen. So you can use it uh, right now. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. 
also good to see you, Ava. <laughs> so maybe it's just, we'll see. We'll see what they say coming back. Um, if it's... We, we had a few errors when they ran the install script for us. So we were finding a few things that were a little wonky. And then once they fixed them, like identified them. And then, so I don't know. Okay. Maybe, like I just said. I mean, if it was something that went out into production, there would be a whole bunch of people that would be unhappy with that. Um, and yeah. Susan, this has to do with what you reported about it not populating. It actually showed up on the MFA server as well, not just the bucket server and in other interfaces, um, but it's not showing up on the on Taryn's test server um, or 313. So. So I'll just wait and be patient then and complain loudly when I have the opportunity. <laughs> Is it a formal bug at the moment or are you still investigating it? Um, so I don't know the answer to that. I've done my investigation. Uh, the response I got was that we haven't changed anything. We'll, we'll file a launch pad ticket, but if it's something that it may be just fixed, like somebody said, uh, Taryn, I think it was you, to run Autogen or something like that, like, but, okay. but we should not have things introduced as bugs into main because of projects or regressions. Also, Werner. <laughs> Yeah, you're referring to all of the <laughs> reports bugs that got introduced? No, I'm not. But I'm sure I probably could. I have not spent a lot of time over in reports since that, so I'm sure. There's some There's some pretty ugly ones. Oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, we found a couple. Man. Yeah, we couldn't edit an ex pre-existing report or clone it. That got fixed. Um, I applied a patch to ours, and it's working. Um, collapse and uncollapse, like having everything collapsed or visible. And the patch has been pushed over into that, the code yeah. base? Not yet. On some of them. You On can't it. select uh, ranges of libraries in an org unit drop down? That's not cool. No, I'm going to just not think about some of those right now because. So do you have to select, you have to, you have to select them individually though, right? Is that what you mean? They apparently they in, they did add a um like select descendants. So if you're selecting everything in one group, that works. But if you just want to, if you need to select a range from any drop down, mm -hmm. then it doesn't work. Like if you have a list of circ modifiers and you want to select a range, there's no way to select all or to select. You can't use the control. Oh my goodness sakes alive. That's literally the only thing that was good about the former reporter. <laughs> Okay. Um, do you have the select one, Taryn? I can add it to the our... bug. Um, I can add something to it because we're going to do the same thing in the mm -hmm. reports committee next week. So yeah, we're like a half dozen reports bugs filed this morning yeah. i think yeah yeah uh, yesterday and today john okay. edmonds and um submitted most of them okay have to look at those And from a system administration standpoint, including descendants and including ancestors is not flexible enough. Well, and that only works in certain situations too. Yeah, I mean, that only works if you're talking yeah. about the org tree even. Yeah, if it, anything, yeah, it only works if you have a hierarchy. <laughs> a lot of things don't have hierarchies. Right. What can I do about this situation? Add heat. 
<laughs> Any other standouts for the reporter that we should be aware of outside or is there um, do we want to look at all of them or do you want to that's more kind of a we could look at them next week at the reports meeting are they all tagged as reports regression so far that you've um, seen they all have reports i've been adding regression to them okay. as i come across them but they're i probably didn't get all of them But if you do, uh, if you search by reports and then just sort by date created, it should pop all the new ones up to the top. Does anybody else find it funny that reports would have a regression bug on it? <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that gallows humor? Yes. Okay. <laughs> funny, but not funny. <laughs> Elizabeth, you said that you encountered other bugs too when you were setting up your test server. I'm just curious if was it mostly related to the reporter or were there other things too? Yeah, um, some of the sources aren't showing, like the three new sources for acquisitions weren't showing. That was a bug. Um, trying to think now. Of course, now that I'm on the spot, I can't think of any of them. Or maybe they mentioned it when I complained about complained about something, and they're like, "Oh yeah, we did see some errors in the script, so we do we had to rerun it." So now that I'm yeah, I think they didn't tell me specifically what they were, but um, but we're we're not a duck, so um, I would, I'm not surprised that we ran into some issues. We use some configuration every that. consortium is an odd duck <laughs> but we have four or fourth or unit tier oh that's right your your org your org tree is a little bit weird but it's cool no, evergreen's it's flexible that way but it's not i mean not everyone builds development for fourth org unit structures so we're the opposite way we have just the two levels do you really yep so <laughs> <laughs> so okay uh sorry i'm opening all these bugs and then not talking about them okay the editor and then the org units selector could be simplified yeah that would be Oh, this image in this bug is amazing <laughs> for the work unit selection. Okay, um, I'm gonna look at these uh, during the reports committee next week, if that's okay with you folks, if you want to add heat to them now. Um, I have no problem talking about them now, but it kind of seems, I'm not sure if there's anything else that people wanted to chat about? I have some bugs that I had gone through and collected. Um, I think shortly after Michelle had mentioned this idea a couple meetings ago that were either like, some of them are like self-serving because I've reported them, but then others are, um, are like ones that are kind of like a little bit older. And I'd be happy to share a couple of those if you guys want to chat about those. Sure. Um, one of them is, let me see, copy the link here. This one is move mark templates into the database. Um, I don't know if anyone else has ever had to do this, but occasionally our cataloging staff um, will ask to have adjustments to the mark templates. And in order to actually adjust those templates, you have to like actually edit a file mm -hmm. um, and then like upload it to the server. And um, 
our hosts at Equinox make it like pretty easy to to do that. Um, but it would be a lot easier if we didn't have to have that kind of like extra step of like FTPing a file um, over and could just do edits in an interface or something. Um, so that's a longstanding one. Has anyone else encountered this? Evergreen Indiana definitely did. I mean, we have multiple comments in here from different people at Evergreen Indiana that the way that MARC templates are handled currently and historically is, I mean, it's an efficiency nightmare and uh, doesn't really, We Evergreen Indiana, of course, I'm not there now, so don't think that I'm speaking for them, but they don't, they don't have centralized cataloging. Um, so it would be way better um, to have this available um, in a different manner. I mean, it's like 10 steps essentially to, to get every one mark template updated if it comes from um, consortial work. And the consortium members are the ones who do the vast majority of work when it comes to policy and procedures. So yes what we <clears throat> what we would like uh, uh, to see uh, would be a possibility to uh, hide uh, some templates uh, according to a uh, library because for example we have uh, two libraries that have students uh, works and we uh, catalog them and it would be nice if we <laughs> wouldn't mix uh, our templates because uh, we have as much uh, things as possible predefined. And uh, that's why we have two templates. And it's it's a problem because <laughs> we, we have also very long list than uh, with uh, various templates for various libraries. But I am thinking about uh, um, uh, about um, linked data and bib frame. I'm not sure if it's the right time to reorganize uh, just uh, just mark templates uh, without uh, thinking about uh, about bib frame. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's just an old. And that's a good consideration because, I mean, ideally there would be significant work done on the management of MARC templates. Um, yeah. And to put significant work toward that and then have to rethink the whole deal uh, because of, well, because of BibFrame and linked data. That's a lot of energy to put after one that doesn't get put after the other. And yet, wouldn't it be cool? <laughs> Putting aside the bib frame part for a second and kind of focusing on what you said about um, being able to have templates according to specific org units, I could see something like that almost work in kind of like the server managed print templates exactly yeah. interface does i think that would be really neat Um, I have more bugs to chat about if people would like to, me to keep going or if anyone else has bugs, we can like round robin. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just taking some notes. Uh, but yeah, okay. Anybody? Um, here's another one then. This is, let me see what the title is. Custom error messages for circ or hold matrix match points. Um, and this is one I had 
flagged a while ago, and then I was reminded about it recently. Um, our specific use case for this is um, we have a couple patron profile groups that aren't allowed to check out items. And so those are like patrons who have registered for a card online, but then the way that our library's workflow works is they need to come in and um, like provide proof of address or identification or whatever else the library requires before they can actually check items out. Um, and so when, if they, if they haven't gone through that process, but they still try to check an item out, um, the CERC staff will just get a like uh, CERC not allowed um, or copy CERC not allowed mm. error message without any further details. And almost all the time they think that it is an error with the item itself and that the item has been marked as reference or has a bad CERC modifier or something else is wrong with the item. Um, and so that specifically is why we would love to have error messages. I'd love to hear if anyone else has encountered this or has other like use cases where this could be um, handy. Give us more error messages for everything. Yeah, just say <laughs> error message, error message. Give us all the error message is. And let them be accurate and easy to understand. So this is kind of related, but not, I don't know, maybe. So we have some libraries where say you hit hit two two error messages and say you have a limit uh like a hold limit let's not get on that's a whole other problem hold <laughs> limit on circumod high demand items and so uh they have you have that block and then you also have like you know patron has too many fines or something like that sometimes depending on the order in which it hits the blocks or the penalties, you can either override it or not. And so it's like, wait, like, mm. you can, it's kind of like random, like, am I going to be able to override it or not? Well, we'll see where it hits the penalty or the block message first, because it was really weird. So like, having that explained a little bit more too would be helpful. But kind of similar to your situation, we do have some libraries that allow anyone any to be able to use any library card as long as it's registered in within our consortia, and some don't. And so being able to say like, hey, check their account, like this is a, not a home library of this system, but so this is why you can't check it out to that person. So stuff like that. So I guess two. I think one of the the issues that I have historically had is that, of course, these are all triggered. Like these are things that that are triggered, but not everything is like those that triggered. Like we think triggered events and, and all of those things, but not everything is actually in that because they're not necessarily created, and so those events are not exposed even. Um, anywhere in the interface to say, this is what it says. This is what, what is causing it. Um, and it would, for my part, it would be nice to have more information in the interface. Like if something causes a trigger for, like have all of the error messages that are there and what triggers them in an interface, even if you can't do anything with them, even if you can't necessarily change, it, you can at least see it and see what it's connected to. Um, because essentially they're working in the same process oriented way as just a an action trigger um, that has, you have your hooks and your reactors and all of those things, but they're just, it's just not exposed. And, and I've always found that pretty frustrating. So kind of like the debugging info when you when you get a report and it's like mm -hmm. oh like maybe it's not always visible but you could click to see like yeah why click something to see what what is this coming from yeah that's a good one 
I will say though, I'm very, very happy about, I mean, I love the evergreen community in general. So please don't say, when I say this about the new people coming in, I'm not dissing on the old people. Um, and I mean more experience, not like age, but this new crop of people that have come into the community uh, in the, the past, we'll say few years, I'm not sure exactly how many years, who are like, why is this not accessible? Why are there no error messages? What the heck? Why is it toast so weird? Um, it's been very nice <laughs> because I, I think that some of us more experienced people, I guess we'll say seasoned, we're very used to like duct taping our way through things and, and saying, well, that's dumb, but we lived with it so far. So let's just live with it a little bit longer. And then new ones are like, why? It's fixable. <laughs> so I'm very appreciative of 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 those those people saying, why? Why are you doing that? Why struggle? I'm looking right at your face, Stephen. But it's not just you, but still. All things are possible with development. <laughs> I want to believe. I want to believe. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I think we filed that bug, actually. Let me find it, Susan. Because we, we, it wasn't, it was actually, so staff can apply, can request multiple copies. That's what it was. Staff can request multiple copies of an item, but if you have a circulation or a hold policy limit on a specific circ modifier and you try and, and you place your 10 holds, that's our limit, and then you go back in to place another 10, it's like, wait, you already have your 10 holds on this item, but you also have, you're also hitting the block, hold block limit for that specific circ mod. So it was like two. And so in some cases it was giving them the option to override and then sometimes they weren't. Mm. Let me see if I can find it. This is not a bug, but I just have to tell somebody in case you haven't seen it. Um, and this does impact, I think some of you in here that um, there's been a change at Bywater Solutions. If anybody uses Aspen in them with, uh, and Dan is not in his head, so he's probably seen this, heard about it with Jordan um, Fields and Mark Noble forming their own little development company, which is, I think, kind of big deal and awesome because it means it's another company in our open, open source library space. I think I thought they already were a company. Grove. Well, they were together at Bywater. Oh, and then she was like VP had moved up to VP pretty recently. And then. Yeah. Grove. Hey, Josh. <laughs> okay. Bug. That's the one I was talking about. It doesn't match specifically the situation that I was describing, but. Oh, but it is re referencing the copy rather than the the patron. Or at least that's what I was told I was hitting. Mm -hmm. I have another one related to blocks, which is. Um, this one here, force action will clear subsequent blocks. Um, I don't know if this is still a thing, but I feel like I've seen it recently where um, if you're encountering multiple errors that are able to be overridden, then you won't be presented with each one individually. one's a hard one to test too. Yeah. But this isn't exactly what you were saying, right, Elizabeth? This just is a little bit different. Um,
Alors, that looks like where it would trigger the one override getting to the, the next issue, like it just circum, circumnavigates it, doesn't even trigger that again because of the other block that's being overridden. Shenanigans. Oh. Mm. This one seems that it should have been fixed though, right? Hmm. I don't I think so. Just looking at, but um, yeah, we ran into that. And Taryn, correct me if I'm misremembering the situation. Um, someone was placing a hold, and I think some of the items were age protected, but not all. Um, and then I think they also exceeded fines, or there was like another block, but they were only seeing the age protection block, even though it didn't really apply to them, but it applied to, I guess, technically the situation. It checked that first over the patron penalties. So that so when- Something it, like the it, order it looks at it is not always the best, but I don't know what the best order would be. Did you, did you override the uh, age protection check that came up? Um, I don't even know what we did. Okay. I'm assuming so. I think um, it was more just a matter of which message is showing. Oh, which like message it's not, is showing. It's not yeah. showing the most important message sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And changing the order, there's, it's getting messages in two different ways. Mm -hmm. And so it's always looking at one set of messages before the other set of messages. So even if you change the order within the set of one set of messages, it might still get the other one out of the other set first mm -hmm. it's a ugly ugly mess there needs to be a, like an intermediary thing that says this is complicated <laughs> let's take a pause we're gonna create an index of all the issues here and then <laughs> well it would be Just nice kidding. for staff to be able to see what all of the blocks are but for patrons mm -hmm. they need to see a single block a single message right the most important one, which would be if they exceed fines. I mean, that's generally yeah. speaking the most, and then you can get into age protection once that's cleared. I know I had some notes on this somewhere and I can't find them now. I was just looking at um, someone we know named Lucy and that's all I'll say submitted it. So I just looked through our chat. Oh. Talking about Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lucy. Okay. I hope I didn't delete my notes on that. Should I share another bug? Or are we still? Don't wait on me. <laughs> okay. Okay. I wasn't sure if we were. Okay. Um, this one, there's actually been some movement on from Steven recently, which is super exciting. Um, this is record staff user who created bills. So we <laughs> looked at this. We looked at this on Monday okay. and I added a thing there, Stephen. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure that it's something that has happened and like come up before of 
if it is trying to show information about a user that you don't have permissions to view, it comes up as null, which like just means that the entire like field is empty. Because I've like, which I have like seen it like be if you made the changes like as admin and then go look at the build details it does look empty if you are like n just a normal cataloger or something um which i think that's been a problem at least once before which means it might be time for me to make a like ticket of be more clear that like you didn't fail to find and instead you just don't have permission to see but it showed up in the other the other columns though yeah oh. under the same user i think it did show up yeah in the screen it was only this oh. this one interface <sighs> hmm okay then that is we were more super excited be... we were super excited it works more likely almost be... perfectly then so huh <laughs> Did I, like, miss a tiny string change that I did after I pushed instead of before? Let's if, see. If, if somebody else wants to put that on a test server just so we could look at it again, I would be happy to say I made a mistake on my test server. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, okay. are, we are ready, ready to sign off on that as soon as it's <laughs> exciting. Any... Any improvements to Bill's interface? It's actually funny too, because when I I was like collected bugs for this list back in like June or so, um, and so then like last week I was like going through and um, or actually maybe it was even yesterday I was going through and like looking at like a couple of them. I was like, wait a second, something's changed about this one. There's mm -hmm. been movement, which was super exciting to see. I'm doing my part. When I see it. Even if it's like, it's impacting us too. I'm like, yes, I'm not alone. Mm. And I think too, I think that we can probably target that for 314. Not sure why we didn't do that already. Who knows? Who knows? And also, Stephen, we commented as well that we love the fact that you write uh, testing comments. It was very, very helpful. It's actually selfish because I'm pretty sure if I like make it a habit, then everyone's going to go, oh, this is a Stephen bug. He always writes how to test them. That's easy. That's correct. So I'll get more of my code in. Your selfishness works for literally all of us. Keep doing it. What do they say? Take care of yourself first. Take care of yourself first. You're amazing. Also, if you need a hype person, I mean, I'm here for you. <laughs> what are you saying, Elizabeth? I was going to say it's also helpful for you, like Steven, to remember, like, how did I test this? Because I write tickets and I answer tickets and I'm like, how did I figure that out? Like months later, I was like, oh God, how did I do that? So I, I may model after you on this. <laughs> do we want to sit on this one for a little bit longer or does anyone have um, another bug? I would just ask, is there something that we, especially those of us who maybe haven't participated in Bug Squashing Week as much and who don't fully know exactly what the process is 100% like, um, like what can we do for like something like this next week? Darren, take it away. Um, <clears throat> well, normally um, for Bug Squashing, we, like the baseline is that we set up uh set of 
test servers, each with current main and um, a set of pull requests loaded onto them so that anyone and everyone can test. Um, but any other activity that you take during Bug Squashing Week will also get counted. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, uh, um, as far as actually fixing anything, there's no like formal way to like get together and work on anything together or anything like that. Um, but um, I'm sure we could set up like some Google Meet spaces or Zoom spaces or something if anybody wanted to do that. Is that where you're asking or did I miss your point? <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think, and I guess, like for this one in particular, is this like one, like there's a pull request here, um, and so like would this be on a test server for people um, to test? We try to put as many pull requests on test servers as we can, um, and then as things get tested, they can be moved off, and the test server can be rebuilt. So each test server usually has like six or eight. Uh, pull requests on it at once. And I haven't um, even looked this week yet to see how many open pull requests we have. Um, some of them as we go through, and it's it's mostly me and Blake, um, as we go through and attempt to put them on test servers, we'll find ones that you know need to be rebased and stuff like that. So we'll update those bugs and they'll have to go back um, and get rebased before we can apply them. But um, But this one for sure, especially since it's it's uh, since Stephen sits about 30 feet from me, <laughs> that mm -hmm. one's definitely going on a test server. <laughs> and we have a high vested interest in getting that, getting that one in. And Blake is usually good about setting up a, um, a an internationalized uh, server too. So I've been putting the, the bugs that everyone has mentioned in this document. If you want any to be added to it, feel free. Um, I'm just, they're very loose notes for myself. I'll try and flush them out a little bit afterwards. But um, just if you if you have a bug that you're very at <laughs> campaigning for, <laughs> if you want others to look at them, it'll be there. Um, I do have, so you have multiple release teams going on right now. Let me, um, see if I can find what I'm looking for quickly. The answer is no, but I'm going to just color commentary all the way through it. Um, So this is not completely done, and it's something that we've been, um, it's a living document, so it changes, and it's not completely up to date, uh, and we'll go back and do more. But what it has is, um, and I'm really just bogging down my computer, so. a list of um, tickets and what they have been targeted for, what release they've been targeted for, and what their status may be. Um, and there are tabs down at the bottom. So you can see the 314 is, is actually not um, correct yet, because we need to go and add some more in there. Um, but hopefully there'll be a lot of commits pretty soon as well, as soon as the merge pause is lifted, which should be pretty soon. Um, so if that is helpful to anybody too, to see anything in there that um, may, 
you might be interested in. These are things that may go in or may not, but um, but check through all of these tabs. Like there are some in here that have no milestone set. Um, I've been trying to go through there and see, can we actually set milestones for it? But then I haven't moved those things over necessarily. So anyway, um, there's a whole big spreadsheet with a bunch of things on it and uh, it will change, but if it sparks some inspiration in you, that's amazing. The important spreadsheets will be coming down from Tarrant next week though. I have a question in general, and I put it out, I think the cataloging list yesterday, but does anybody use the link checker? Did you get any responses at all? No, and I cannot get it to work and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So I'm just kind of like, is it my, how I'm setting up the query? And also why is this query feel like I'm writing original code. I like, I don't understand how to set it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I've read the documentation three times. We used the checker, but it was 3.6. I believe it's, uh, it's very old. So I won't mm -hmm. help you probably. Okay. But I you know that. Good. I was going to say, I know that Jane Sandberg has been doing work with the link checkers. Um, so she might be a good resource. Okay. I will reach out. I just feel like I'm trying to replicate successful ones that were done previously and I'm not getting the same results or any results. So I don't know, like, do I just need to leave the window open and let it keep going? Or can I let it run in the background and will it finish when it finishes? What happened to us in the, in the old uh, uh, interface was that it used to work and suddenly it stopped working and we discovered that it was uh, not working in google chrome and we did link checker work in uh, in firefox it okay. it used to work but uh, it was i believe it was some some chrome uh, chrome upgrade or something like that mm -hmm. but really it stopped working and okay. and it worked in in firefox i i don't know why and I, I I have said it's uh, it it has been in in the older versions, so maybe it's no longer an, an issue. I know it got rewritten for three thirteen, and that's where I was testing it, so I wasn't sure if maybe my test server isn't turned doesn't have it turned on or something. So that's my next step. But thank you. We've got nine minutes left. If anyone has anything they'd like to chat about. Or if you have a topic you'd like to chat about next month, that would be cool. Does any, let me check my words real quick. Decide if I want to go with my first thought. I do. I have a problem with the simple reporter. I don't think it's as simple as it says that it, <laughs> it should be. In fact, I think that it's complicated. And I'm not sure I understand now that they, there is the Angular reporter the purpose for its existence. Can somebody explain to me that purpose? We don't use the simple reporter because it doesn't do what Anything? we want it to do. Oh, I mean, it does do some things. I guess I shouldn't say that. <laughs> okay. we, we use our homegrown little PHP thing. Oh, that's thing. right. You have your delightful little thing. The simple yeah. reporter doesn't, it's too complicated for to be easy and it's not sophisticated enough to do it 
complicated things. So mm -hmm. we have people who use it for like simple things like a list of patrons or count of checkout. Like it's good for that, but you still really need to know like, okay, I need like all of the filters and all of the, mm -hmm. like what each one means. Like, you know, you have to know not to pick ID when in the display and then you, but you want ID in the filters. Like there's still not, I feel like it's, it, it needs some, and what would well and I guess what is the point of doing work on it when the Angular reporter is more powerful and does the things that you would expect, except for all these regressions, um, from the reporter. Does that make sense? Am I like just yes. being a jerk about this or? No, no. What I've said really from the very it. beginning. You were right. Like, if you're going to make it simpler, make it simple. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like, just have canned that, reports. The fact, that, yeah, the list fact of them. that you can't load canned reports into it and that you can't share templates make it unusable. Oh, that that whole shenanigan. I don't can't even with that. Don't, I can't go back in time. My ire is still there. Okay. Well, I it's a stepping stone, but it's not very a good stepping stone because if you learn the simple reporter first and then try and learn a full reporter, you're like, wait, the terms are yeah. different, fields are named different, how the transforms work are kind of different in some ways, like especially if you're using like a relative date. Mm -hmm. So it's not a stepping stone, but it could and be. And the thing that that brought this up is that um, there was a comment that the virtual resources, which I am making an assumption are really for the simple reporter. Uh, well, they say they are simple reporter circulations are not available in the Angular reporter. Okay. There's like one this thing. This is a fighting simple, battle in my head. I need to stop it. There's like one thing the simple reporter does that I really like. And it's what is when that? you want to look at a weeding, it's a weeding report. And you can look at the circs for what year to date, one year ago, two years ago, three years ago, five years ago. And it'll like stack. You could stack them like in a row. And that's literally the only thing I like about it. Because like if you want to see the trend of a circulation, it makes mm -hmm. it very easy for uh, you to see that. So. That, that, that's like literally the only thing. I can and that's do. the simple reporter weeding. Source. I'm assuming source, and that's one that's not available in the Angular reporter. Yeah. Okay. It feels like like the most inefficient way to like have a code base, a piece of software ever to like do this. I mean to have two different tools mm -hmm. and a different set of sources even that are not accessible. The full reporter is done, doesn't have access to the full set of sources. So you get pushed into this other thing if you want to use that. And it's in the same piece of software. Okay. I like flowers and kittens and rain. And there's a really good thing about peppers on Apple Plus TV. Just wanted to say something positive because I feel like I just went way down a negative thing. Oh, and there's an XKCD comic. But it's in one piece of software. Competing standards in one piece of software, Dan. We actually we don't use. I, everyone's always shocked when I say this, but we don't use any reporter built in in Evergreen at all. We have also a a separate competing standard PHP roll your own thing that uh, Bob at Owl built 10, 15 years ago or something, and 
um, we find it easier to artisan code our reports in SQL and <laughs> give them to the libraries that way. Can we get that? Can we get one of like either <laughs> Owl or Pines is like dashboard in? Because that's what I want. Because people email and we're just like, I need a circ report. And I'm like, here you go. Like I have to explain to them how to use the reporter or how to use the simple think reporter. Pines actually shared all of their code and everything for that. Yeah, it's in an old. I mean, it's been updated a little bit since then. It needs it needs some work because it's not on the current version of PHP. But um. But is it in master or is it something that we have? Like, no, no, because it's it in P it's in PHP, so it would never be in main. <laughs> so, um, I'll try to find the old. Um, I'll try to. Find My brain is old. broken because I'm thinking about yeah. like the sustainability of the software in the community, and this this kind of thing is one of the things that is problematic. Yeah, I mean, to me, what Simple Reporter should have been was just like canned reports. Mm -hmm. Like you exactly create them like what in, Pines has or what yeah Al yeah it's has, like you yeah. create the templates in Evergreen and then put those mm -hmm. templates in a place where all the library staff can use them and all they have to do is run them. Mm -hmm. Select a few check boxes and drop downs and run them. Yeah, these are these are your parameters. That, that's that it. would be simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which like now you know is much more doable like in-house like when we had that created like none of us knew any development at all sure um so we just hired somebody to do it and they decided to do it in php because they didn't know evergreen <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um that's not the that's not the way we would do it now but there you go Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, if you want to talk more about reports bugs, we'll be uh, meeting next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Tuesday at 2? Yes. 2 p.m. on the 27th Eastern Standard Time. If you want to, I... we're going to go through bugs and I think we're going to see if we could figure, like, test them. So. Awesome. Okay. All, I expect all of you guys to be on the bug squashing spreadsheet that I'm tracking. <laughs> yes. no. And we'll have an update from Stephen very, very soon uh, on the creator column. And <laughs> I have an update right now, actually. <laughs> yes. The reason that it was saying admin in like the main bill screen and not the other is that I forgot I added a like dumb and bad fallback for if it returned a null to if it was ever empty, just say that admin was the creator. <laughs> That's a shenanigan, but I like it. Yeah, so I probably should make it not do that. Uh... <laughs> okay, so if you wanted to like take that out and then we'll go back in and test it after. <laughs> But it, but that's not necessarily well, that, incorrect, that though. Doesn't, yeah, it's because you know, like, data set. It yeah. might be... Uh, admin might not be the name of your, like, one uh, yeah, of the first true. user. Although I think that's, like, very hard to get around in Postgres. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, hard-coded into Evergreen, I think, to build the admin user first. <laughs> uh, would, it, would it be... Would it but it would also put... say that admin made something if someone else made it and yeah. you weren't allowed to look at them as well. Oh, so yeah, if yeah, if you can remove, but that's not is... showing up though. Yeah, but so I mean, obviously, since it's if for data that's in the past, we wouldn't know who the creator was because it just doesn't exist. So could yeah, could it display something like, you know, I don't know, not un unknown or or empty or something like that, like so that it's the maybe that's I feel like that's how other things have what did you say, Dan? Legacy? Like legacy, yeah. Yeah, that's what I yeah. was saying is legacy yeah. as well. Something like that. Or we don't know. 
<laughs> just a big question mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little emoji of a confused face. <laughs> Pick the, one. The shrugging emoji guy. <laughs> That'd be so good. I mean, but then also, I guess maybe not professional, but still funny. Yeah, I could see. I can see why that that will be confusing if there's just nothing mm -hmm. there. It's not easy to tell whether it's not being created or you can't see it. This isn't the first or... time this has come up. This has happened yeah. before. I think to me, probably need to re-examine like a way to give a default value to something you get from the field mapper if you can't fetch it for like permission reasons. <sighs> that would be nice. Maybe on like if if it's per maybe if it's a permissions thing, say something like unavailable. But if it's if there's, but if there's no like days, actually nothing like there, yeah, I'd probably like just have it say nothing at all. Because I mean, or, some things would validly be nothing there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could also be undefined if there's like a null value in there. Just say undefined. Yeah. I do I do think I made the database like require that there be a creator for and the also new one. that and that everything before now has been made by admin. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that which that I mean that makes sense if you were doing a migration it would come in that way. Theoretically. But Cool. But cool. Yay. I'm excited. Good job. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you next month. Bye. Thank you. See you next week. Oh, yes, next week. <laughs> around. I'll see you around. I want to see, see you. Ya.